good people by thanking all of you most, most sincerely for taking time off your very busy schedule so that we interact this morning with specific emphasis on the forthcoming Nyanza International Investment Conference. It's been quite a journey and quite a number of things have taken place culminating into where we are today. I did reach out to a group of Nyanza professionals drawn from various disciplines sometime last year and asked them one basic but very, very fundamental question. Why is it that as professionals we don't want to soil our hands in the development space as far as Nyanza is concerned? Granted, it, we may deem it to be the functional mandate of both the national government and the county governments to facilitate development in our regions. But there are quite a number of economic opportunities informed by comparative advantages that we could latch into as professionals in our individual capacities to augment the two levels of government as far as the development agenda of Nyanza is concerned. And it is out of those initial discussions that the idea of hosting an international investment conference came into being. And we did agree from the onset that this time round, we want it to be an investment conference that will translate into results. Our history is awash with many examples of conferences we have held in the past. We have had many uh, uh, policy documents, we have had many uh, strategic plans emanating from workshops we have held in the past to discuss the development agenda of Nyanza as a region. But the elephant in the room is that we do not translate strategy into results. And as opposed to waiting for the two levels of government to do their bit, let us put our feet on the deck and see what we can do as professionals to play a contributing component to enable Nyanza as a region exploit its full potential from an economic development perspective informed by the comparative advantages of that region. So that really is the rationale and justification of all this. And moving forward, therefore, on the home stretch to the, to the workshop, we envisage that through this workshop, we will get a thought platform through which we can match the interests, expectations, and aspirations of investors, both foreign and local, with the economic opportunities that we have. And that at the tail end of that conference, we should be able to sign off certain tangible agreements informed by the opportunities that we have from an economic perspective. We want to make this process, good people, to be as participatory and all-inclusive as possible. And in that regard, we have had, working with distinguished members of the organizing committee, had several meetings with various stakeholder groups. We have had a meeting with the European Union, yeah, um, an odd team of about 30 ambassadors. And we gave them an exposé on the economic opportunities available in Nyanza, and they have assured us that they'll bring investors to the conference. Last weekend, we had a meeting with the business community under the auspices of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Again, they have assured us that this is a good initiative. They are coming to the conference. We have had an interaction with architects, engineers, quantity surveyors, and planners, those in the space of the construction industry. Again, we have ended up with the development of a common denominator, that this is an idea that we should pursue to a logical conclusion. Only yesterday again, we had a meeting with the doctors and other health practitioners, and again, we are moving in tandem towards um, uh, the conference. In the same vein, we are having this interaction with you good people. And it was very strategic to have this interaction at a meeting with Faith, and we agreed that 
the Law Society of Kenya, or lawyers for that matter, is a co an integral stakeholder segment that cannot be left behind when we are discussing the development agenda of Nyanza or any other part of Kenya for that matter. You guys are opinion leaders informed by your functional mandates and also you are very respected members of the society in the areas that you come from. We need to work together and that is why we felt that it is important, imperative to have this discussion so that you become in equal measure part and parcel of this process. Let me take just a few minutes to talk about, as an officer serving in the government, some of the major interventions that the government is undertaking in Nyanza with a view to exploiting the full potential of that region from an economic perspective. In agriculture, for example, we are aware that we have been facing the historical and perennial challenge of unsettled farmers' areas in the sugar sector. That has now been sorted out. But again, with the president moving from the front, we now want to go the full hog and ensure that one more time, we turn around, we revitalize, reinvigorate the operations of those companies so that one more time, they can again attain optimal capacity utilization levels. And what we are doing in this space is that, as opposed to previous efforts or attempts at the sale of those sugar companies. This time round, we are thinking of lease of those companies. We are getting private sector players to come in, pump money yeah, into those sugar companies while working with all the other integral stakeholders within that space so that we can again revitalize those sugar companies. That is work in progress. Had it not been for the, some of the court cases, it would have actually be seeing light at the end of the day today. But we believe that we are going to turn around those companies. And as all this is happening, if I was seated on your side, I would be thinking of the opportunities available for lawyers. How do we come in? Any, in any venture where we have got these private sector players, how do we come in? I, I'm very happy with the Okil Kamaloka initiative. If you guys pull together resources, yeah, by way of economies of scale, you would tap into some of these opportunities so that we uh, have homegrown people, people from Nyanza, also becoming partners of some of these prospective foreign investors. In the blue economy arena, we are setting up fish landing sites along all the beaches in Nyanza. We have started with beaches such as Usenge, Wichilum, Luanda Kotieno, Asembo Bay in Siaya. We are moving down to Kindu Bay, Homa Bay, all the way down to Mehur in Migori. This is geared towards ensuring that we have refrigeration facilities for our fishermen. It is actually very irritating good people that we get fish from Lake Victoria, but it is processed very far away from there. If we got fish processing plants along the beaches, or on the shores of Lake Victoria, and in equal measure expanded Kisumu Inter Airport to international standards, we would be able to process our fish and ferry it directly to foreign markets and plow that back that money into the Nyanza region. That is a great uh, opportunity. We also have major infrastructure interventions. I'll pick just a few to talk about. We have had the issue of Koruso in Dam for quite a while. It's been the plans for quite a while. The model that was conceptualized for that project may not be feasible within the context of the prevailing economic situation. It was envisaged that we will fully fund that dam through exchequer funding, our own exchequer funding. But we have now re-engineered the model to adapt public-private partnership as the most immediate, feasible, and sustainable means through which we can pursue that dam to a logical conclusion. Only last week, CS Water was in Indonesia, and he has concluded discussions with an Indonesian company that is willing to come in and partner with the government in the construction of that dam. So that is a discussion. It's work in, pro in, in, in progress. 
and we believe that one more time uh, this final attempt will enable us to uh, complete um, that dam and it will help us sort out the perennial challenges of flooding in Nyando. It will facilitate last mile connectivity of water to households. It will also augment the efforts of the Sondu Miriu Dam uh, by way of um, electricity generation. Then we also have the Lake Victoria Ring Road. This again is a historical road. It's been there for since time immemorial. It's never seen light at the end of the day. Under this government, we are determined under infrastructure space to ensure that this road is done. The Kenya National Highways Authority, as we speak, has redesigned the road. The design has been approved by the Ministry of Infrastructure. They have forwarded their proposal of recommendation to the National Treasury, and as we speak, we are at advanced stage of negotiations with the World Bank for purposes of um, funding. And all factors being held constant, we are definitely going to get that funding from the World Bank. And this time around, we will be able to have the Lake Region Ring Road being implemented. And this is going to open up the entire Nyanza region <laughs> by way of entrepreneurship and commerce. It will facilitate um, trade, entrepreneurship, not just within the Nyanza counties, but also intra-county trade between the Nyanza counties and other parts of Kenya, and also give us connection by way of commerce to the neighboring countries. And it will be a big game changer, a big game changer. If we did that, then we expanded the Kisumu airport, and then expansion of the airport in Homa Bay is now work in progress, same to Migori, and we have a few airstrips here and there. I was telling the doctors yesterday when one of the doctors told me that you know uh, we need to dwell this road to Kisumu all the way from Naivasha. And I told the doctor that you, you need to know people. We guys from Nyanza don't use road, we go by air. <laughs> anyway, that's on a, on a light, on a light, uh, on a light note. One space where you guys can also really help us is mining. If you go to Makalda in Migori, or even Saradidi in Assembo, or Wagusu in Sakwa, the only performance indicator that will give an expression that any mining has gone on in those areas is big gapping holes, left unattended, worst of all. Is it possible that we can review our policies, laws, and regulations so that in any part of this country where mining is done, whether it is titanium in the coast or gold in Nyanza, iron ore in Homa Bay, a substantial proportion of the proceeds emanating from the mining is plowed back by way of investment to the local community so that we can witness a rise in the standards of living of the people. That is a discussion that we need to have, and we need to have it as soon as yesterday. The other opportunities um, that we have in the road space is how to complete the roads which have stalled. We are alive to the fact that quite a number of roads have stalled in the country. What we have agreed on as a government, under the guidance of the president, is that any funding that we have that goes to the road sector will first of all be utilized to pay contractors for those roads which have stalled before we embark on new ones. And that is where the Mamboleo, Miwani, Chemelin Road falls in. But there are also certain spaces which have been more locked up, if I may use that phrase, which require immediate intervention to open up those regions. And it is in this regard that we have recently um, commenced the construction of a 53-kilometer road in Mufangano Island and another 74-kilometer road in Rusinga Island. It is our view that infrastructure is a major facilitator of everything else that we are talking about. So good people, I want to assure you that the government is committed this time around to the development of Nyanza. And without fear of contradiction, perhaps I would say for the first time since independence, we have a government that is truly committed to the development of Nyanza. But that effort must be augmented by all of us as integral stakeholders from that region. 
yeah, collectively or individually, let us see what role that we can play. This uh, forthcoming conference will entail everybody from us. I don't want anybody, any stakeholder segment to complain that they have been left behind. That's why we have been interacting with everybody. His Excellency the President uh, accented to my request to officially op open the conference on the 28th of this month and also be chief guest and keynote speaker. I had a chat with the former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, uh, two days ago. He has also assured me in equal measure that he will take part actively in the conference and rally all the other integral um, uh, stakeholders within the ambit of his space to ensure that they take part in the conference, including but not limited to the county governments. So let's work together, but at the tail end of this exercise, let us witness certain tangible, feasible um, agreements being signed to facilitate development in that region. I want to appeal to you to take part as delegates, also take part as exhibitors. We want to see how you are adapting some of the emerging technologies within your legal fraternity. AI, yeah? Internet of Things, Big Data, Blockchain. How are you integrating this um, in your legal practices to enhance efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery to the people? Equally, informed by the functional domain of our ministry, we are ready and willing to partner with you. Most recently, we did constitute a sector working group to discern the operational environment and advise us on what changes we need to make from a policy, legal, and regulatory perspective in response to some of these emerging technologies. Please, through the LSK president, I want to extend an invitation to the Law Society of Kenya uh, to give us uh, uh, proposals on where you feel we need certain changes in that regard. By way of value proposition, we want to work with everybody. Within our functional domain, again, you are aware we are rolling out 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable. We are establishing and operationalizing 25,000 Wi-Fi hotspots. We are setting up digital hubs um, in the villages. We are um, digitizing government records on one hand and digitalizing government services on the other. We have embarked on local assembly of smart enabled telephones within the BT space. Let's have a discussion with you people. You are the legal brains. Why, why can't we reduce MTR rates, for example, to zero, if not bare minimum, yeah? So that we have got a level playing ground for all the players and facilitate uh, telecommunication across the borders on a level playing ground? Why do we have this lopsided um, arrangement, more something akin to either duopolistic or oligopolistic market structure that ends up giving one attendant player in the market almost absolute monopoly status? Those are discussions that we can have with you people. And my doors are open, depending on unholding events from time to time, we are ready to engage the Law Society of Kenya and by extension all members of the legal fraternity so that we have candid discussions with a view to improving our technological space and most importantly, let's work together to develop Nyanza. We will be remembered as professionals, this generation, if we play some role in turning around the opportunities, economic opportunities we have in Nyanza into tangible results by way of investment so that we can witness a rise in the standards of living of our people. Thank you very much and have a good day.